Late Peas Besties, the No More Late Peas podcast is now available on Patreon. Subscribe to receive exclusive content, including Ask Me Anything, playlists, live streams, bonus clips, and more. Check us out at patreon.com forward slash no more late fees. Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and ex Blockbuster employees rewatching some of our favorite movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. And this week, going with our summer theme, we're doing I Know What You Did Last Summer, a 1997 American slasher. Directed by Jim Gillespie. Written by Kevin Williamson, as we all know from Dawson's Creek and Scream. And starring Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Ryan Phillippe, and Freddie Prince Jr. All based on the 1973 novel by Lois Duncan. So I watched it on HBO Max. I know you and Johnny rented it. Um, so that's pretty much where you can find it if you want to yes. rewatch after this episode, which you might, you might want to rewatch after hearing <laughs> us go through it. But Jackie and I are not alone. We actually have our friends at the Witchery Podcast with us, Eliza and Jess. Welcome, guys. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. <laughs> thank you for having us. No, thank you guys so much for joining yes, thank us. Thank you. And uh, Jackie, this marks the first time we've gone international. It has. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm ready to start traveling again so I can like go start meeting all of our new friends we've made through the I podcast. know, me too. <laughs> well, we, uh, Jess, you're in South Africa and Liza, you're in England, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah. Well, um, we definitely wanted to do this episode with you guys because you really get into the nit and gritty of all things spooky on your... <laughs> <laughs> on your podcast, <laughs> which I love. You guys give such really good insight and a, a nice breakdown of why some of the things happen in the movie, where things come from, and it's just a really good listen. So why don't you tell everybody how to find you so that they can listen long later on after this episode? Sure. I mean, we're on everything, aren't we, really? <laughs> we're, on, <laughs> we're on everywhere you get your podcasts. We all find us there. We're hanging around somewhere. Um, so you can find us actually through our website, witcherypodcast.com. So that's got links to, to basically everything. We've got a blog on there as well. And we're on Instagram, The Witchery Podcast, and on Twitter, Podcast Witchery. Nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Before we get started, we've got to do our ratings rewind. Are you guys ready for your first ratings rewind? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves we give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best, would play it on repeat. Five day rental. Would okay. watch again. Two day rental. Okay, but nothing to write home about. And same day rental trash straight up trash all right so we'll start with you jess what was your y2k rating of i know what you did last summer um would watch it on repeat i think oh okay nice because i was a shallow teenager <laughs> i don't think it makes me shallow <laughs> eliza um, i'd have bought it buy it definitely buy it as okay. a teenager in fact i did buy it Okay. I did. <laughs> Jackie? Um, I think it was a five-day rental for me. I, I don't think I owned it. And none of the cast, I was just not a big enough fan to watch it on repeat of anyone in the cast. Yeah, same. I definitely would do a five-day rental. I'm not a huge horror fan. Um, I'm a scary cat. Ooh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I'm such a scary cat, and I have to watch it during the daytime. Someone holding my hand. Literally, we went to see a movie, and Jackie and her family kind of like locked me in. So, because I'm a runner, I will. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> 
I will run. She is a really flight in yeah, I'm a, fight or flight. <laughs> I'm a flight risk a hundred percent. So, and it's really hard because my sister like absolutely loves scary movies. And so I, I have to push. I, I really do. The movie starts out and we see this gentleman sitting on a cliff. My mom also watched this movie with me. She was in a panic the whole time that he was too close to the edge and he's drinking a beer and he has this little like charm. He's twirling and then it kind of cuts to a 4th of July celebration in this small fishing town. It seems there were weird fish hats, which I did not care for. (laughs) (laughs) They were very not proud stylish. of their fishermen. They were not, they were not <laughs> stylish. And then it cuts to a beauty pageant. It's the Croker Queen beauty pageant. Wow. Helen, played by Sarah Michelle Geller, is competing in. And her friends, well, her boyfriend, Barry, played by Ryan Philippe. And then her friends, Julie, played by Jennifer Love Hewitt, and Ray, played by Freddie Prince Jr., are sitting up in the the balcony area watching her answer really thought-provoking questions because she's going to be an actress and through art, she will serve her country. (laughs) (laughs) And I had a question. Why was Jennifer Love Hewitt having to sit behind the two guys instead of balcony well I guess so I get I don't know why if it made more sense if Freddie Prince Jr. sat behind because like she's her best Helen's best friend and Barry is her boyfriend Mm -hmm. but bros be bros so I don't know (laughs) I I don't have any insight into (laughs) that I didn't care for that either (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it seems like they always labor her being quite meek. Yeah. Yes. That's it at the beginning, like that she's this kind of little fragile, you know, tiny mouse kind of thing. And then oh, she makes gets strong sense. later on. I don't know. That's the only thing I could think of is kind of they try and always make her a little bit. They dress her like Blossom from Blossom and then they yes. make her look very weak is basically what they do throughout the yeah. whole thing. They do make her very small and mm. weak. Definitely. Mm. So Helen is crowned Miss Croker. Can we talk about the crown? It's beautiful. I, um, it. I mean, it's stunning. Mm-hmm. My my background for this because <laughs> that second dress yes. she wears is amazing, and that's the color of my prom dress. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful dress that one. Beautiful. And those dresses so are back pretty. in style as well. Yeah. Or if you look at like any of the high street stuff at the minute, all of it is that style. Yeah, but I definitely loved the the second dress. But I really hated that wig she was wearing in the for mm. like the first half of the movie. Agreed. Oh, Epically yeah. awful. I mean, the, I agree with the fisherman. She needed a haircut. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was a good stylish Daddy. haircut as well. Yeah. It was. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Yeah. That second hairstyle. Much better than the first with that horrible wig. So then we see they're now at a beach party. I guess, celebrating Helen's victory. And (laughs) And the 4th uh, of July, Jackie. (laughs) Well, yeah. I'm pretty sure she was just celebrating herself. She was feeling her oats. Yeah. (laughs) And you get that interaction when she, like, she's walking into the party with Jennifer Love Hewitt's character, which, you know, as usual, I don't remember names. Um, (laughs) But they run into Helen's sister and like that was such a weird exchange for sisters to have. You could tell very early on that they hate each other. And I don't know. I thought that was actually sad. Yeah. Uh, their whole relationship, the entire movie was just, y'all can't say anything nice to one another. Is this what's happening now? I don't know. <laughs> I think it was because they were trying to misdirect us throughout the whole movie. So they present all these different characters and they're like, maybe it's this person, maybe it's that person. And, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, like the antagonism, it's like a red herring constantly, isn't it? So you yeah. kind of like, if somebody's antagonistic, they have to be the murderer. But it was yeah. just a bit too arch. It was a bit too much. Like, I've, I know sisters that hate each other. Believe me, I know a couple of my best friends <laughs> hate their sisters. But they're not like that. I've no. never seen anything quite that. That's, that's really exaggerated. 
Yeah. It, and I always, and I've said this about a few movies that we've reviewed, like gone over and it, it definitely comes from the state of men not understanding women or they're writing mm-hmm. for women yeah. and they really have yep. zero insight into that whatsoever. And I never for one second thought Elsa was the fisherman. So it was an unnecessary antagonistic relationship. And then right after we meet another red herring, Max, (laughs) Max, which I feel like that role was not casted correctly because if Ryan Phillippe is pushing you and tells you to get the hell out of the way and you're like nerd status pretty much. And you're like two feet shorter than him. Not really two feet. I'm exaggerating, but you really can't, you can't take him. It just like, it would have felt better if you put like maybe another kind of jockish guy or a guy who maybe was on the outskirts, but could take him. Like, it was just such a weird thing. And the fact that he's like almost imprinting onto Jennifer Love Hewitt's character as if she owes him anything. I had to rewind it and re- rewatch just that interaction between the two of them. Um, I wrote, why is Max a close talker and creepy? <laughs> He was in her face. She's politely saying no thanks. And he's not taking the hint. I didn't like it. (laughs) Well, you know what, Jackie, if you were in that situation, she did turn to Helen to help and Helen did not. I would have totally taken care of that for you. Thank you. That's why (laughs) we're friends. Yeah. I'd have been like, beat it. (laughs) Scram. Not interested. (laughs) And then Ryan Phillippe's character, Barry, is that his name? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Barry. Okay. Has the very eloquent insult of chum bait. Yeah. Very clever. <sighs> really. Some of these lines, I, I, they were, it's cringy. I don't yeah. care for it. And Barry's toxic masculinity was just at a high, high level from from jump, and it just oh progressively gets worse. Yes. And I was just like, how did my younger self think this was attractive in any way? And why, why are people even hanging out with him? He's just an ass the entire time and only gets progressively worse. Like you said, to the point where my mom was like, Barry needs to die. When does he (laughs) die? (laughs) My poor sweet mom was rooting for a teenager to be killed. (laughs) He, but he was problematic and he caused so many of the issues they had in this movie because well, there wouldn't be a movie without him <laughs> drunk ass in the back seat. Oh, <sighs> so yeah. And then they decide to go to after. Oh, and then Freddie Prince Jr. comes in. And at that point, I was like, they were together, right? Like they were boyfriend and girlfriend because mm-hmm. from the beginning where you see them on oh, the balcony yes. and to this scene, you still don't get that feeling that they're boyfriend and girlfriend. It felt like Barry and Helen were together, but those two were maybe just friends. Ray and that, Julie. Right. You just, you didn't get the sense that they were together until you get to the beach scene. Where my brother said, yep, as soon as they have sex, badness starts. <laughs> Which is so true for horror movies, right? Like it's the horror rules. Yeah, it is. Yep. And it's something that is mentioned by Julie's character when they're um, in uh, talking around the the fire. Where oh. that and they, they're discussing I'm I'm jumping ahead, aren't I? No, no, <laughs> you're you're, you're right on oh. schedule. Because yeah. <laughs> they're they're discussing all the urban legends around the the man with the hook and and stuff and then she she says uh julie's julie says no that's just to you um it's just used as a warning to keep um, young woman virgins or something like that i'm paraphrasing i can't remember the exact words <laughs> no you're perfectly fine you're probably better than i would have ever gotten it <laughs> clearly um no but it's true i love how they're telling those you know that urban legend and going around and they all have different versions of it but yeah. I think she hit it right on the head that, yeah, it's to scare girls, of course, not scare guys, because guys can have sex, but not the girls. Of course. Of yes. course. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they make it to Dawson's Beach, which I rewound it. 
again, I should have Googled it, but I rewound it because I was like, did they say Dawson's Beach? Because you know it clicked. Kevin Williamson created Dawson's Creek, which is loosely based on his real life living in North Carolina, fishing town, mm-hmm. North Carolina, which is the setting of this movie. And I was like, oh, snap, they did say Dawson's Beach. And so I was like, oh, I don't want to wait until I was. <laughs> yeah, it just naturally clicked right then and there (laughs) so they go to Dawson's Beach and they're sitting around a campfire and they're telling an urban legend about this fisherman killer and um and then after telling that story that just automatically puts them right in the mood to get it on yes (laughs) I mean why not it's a murder and horror I mean that's best aphrodisiac possible that always (laughs) gets me in the mood oh yeah Julie does (laughs) Julie does not follow her own advice nope not at all. And and bangs Ray in the sand, which is just gross. Afterward, yeah. they go to get back in the car. Helen at least has the good sense to take Barry's keys away from him. And of course, his toxic masculinity, no one can drive my car but me. And so Ray starts driving them home. And it's this windy, not a road you would ever find in the Carolinas where this movie is set. And as soon as they showed it, I'm like, that's the Pacific Coast Highway. How did we get from South Carolina to California? But okay, we'll go with it. And so they're driving the coast and it's twisty, turny, windy roads. Barry is super drunk. He's standing through the sunroof and is still drinking straight from the bottle. Also complaining that Ray is a terrible driver and trying to like take over. I don't know what Barry's angle was he's an idiot distracts Ray long enough for Ray to hit something in the road. And so they all pull off to the side and they go to investigate and they find a bloody boot, which my mom goes, is that a head? And I'm like, yeah, she's just standing there holding a severed head. Mother. Oh my God. So now they're like, Oh, we didn't hit an animal. We hit a person. And then they find the fisherman and they believe him to be dead. I just feel like this makes me, these, this situation happens so much in movies. I just want to have some sort of friendship pack. Like, okay, if we kill somebody, what are we doing? <laughs> like, what are the rules? So we don't have this panic. So we're not threatening each other that, you know, after we've done whatever needs to be done, that we still have our friendship intact, you know? Well, I feel like, Four people is too many to keep a secret. Yeah, hundred percent. One of them, you would just kill the fourth person. (laughs) (laughs) Just to be safe, you gotta go too. Yeah, there's a low hanging fruit in every group. We know it. If you have more than three friends, there's there's got to be that one odd man out, and you you just got to get rid of them. (laughs) So now they're arguing over what to do. The girls are like, "We need to call nine one one. We hit a body, right?" And the guys are like. No, we'll get in trouble. Our lives will be over. No, your lives will be over. I was just in the car. I yes. wasn't driving and I wasn't drinking. Yep. Not my problem. Yep. It's Ray who hit the man and Barry who was distracting the driver, yeah. which I will testify in a court of law. All day. <laughs> <laughs> so we know who the low hanging fruit in that car were. Yeah. <laughs> if it were us. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. They somehow convince the girls and the whole time Jennifer Love Hewitt's character is like, this is not a good idea. Who yeah. thinks this is a good idea? Not no. me, but she kind of just stands there because she's outvoted. No, she doesn't just stand there. She gets blasted. She gets obliterated by Barry's toxic masculinity. I mean, That's it true. is just, I mean, I thought he was going to hit Helen. It was so ridiculous when he pretty much decides for the group that he's they're they're not going to tell anybody. He's and a sociopath. A hundred percent. And in that moment, that's when I think for Ray, he lost so many points mm-hmm. because he was a punk ass bitch. <laughs> yes. He did not stand up and say it yeah. was an accident. I can say it was an accident. I don't know what's going to happen to you, a drunk asshole and making me distracted to the point where I hit someone in the road. Right. And he doesn't tell Barry to back off his girlfriend mm-hmm. again. Are they together? Cause I don't see it. I don't yeah, there see were it. No, there was zero chemistry between Jennifer Love Hewitt and yeah. Freddie Prince Jr. 
Yeah. And we can't even say that the actor was distracted by his future wife to be because they didn't get together until way after this movie. Mm -hmm. If you were living under a rock and Freddie <laughs> Prince Jr. and Sarah Michelle Geller, who are now married, they first met on this movie. They decide that they're just going to throw the body in the water and let the currents take it out to sea. I've seen Dexter. That doesn't work. <laughs> I was confused why they didn't drop the body when they were holding it over the railing when, when Max yeah. came. Yeah, were yeah. they just holding on to it the whole time? Yeah, That's what it I, like they I, were doing. Yeah, I thought they were just going to dispose of it that way, but... Yep. No. It makes sense. There's massive cliffs. There's the ocean right there. Yeah. It's just yeah. covered over, and there you go. Yeah, Why and that they... would. Yeah. I don't think anyone would have thought anything of it if the like there was a body that was found at the bottom of a cliff. Like, I don't think they would have investigated further to see if there was any foul play involved. Yeah, have been like, oh, it was this guy, and he slipped and fell. Mm. Yeah. So they would have just teenagers. left it really then because yeah. so they've really overcomplicated it. <laughs> they really by, did. <laughs> by like chucking him there and then making a big thing out of it. Just They should have just owned up at the time. It seems yeah. daft. Yeah, we should have. But they wouldn't should... have been a film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. We should just make a list of all the things that could have prevented this movie from happening. <laughs> and that would have been it. You, If they had thrown him across the cliff, he would have really been dead mm -hmm. and we wouldn't have this problem. So we have Barry's yeah, toxic should have finished masculinity, him number yes, one. <laughs> with that fourth person. Don't yes. go for them over the cliff. So we, um, yes, Max stops by while um, they're kind of taking the body over to the side. The body that they carried seemed awfully light for them to just be casually walking across the road with it. <laughs> Because yeah. he turns out to be quite a big guy as well. Yes. Isn't he? That's the thing. Yeah. Like he's huge. <laughs> and sense. what I don't understand is later on, um, why can't I remember Jennifer Love Hewitt's character's name in this? Julie. Movie? Yeah. Later on, Julie finds out, uh, thinks it's, you know, someone else um, who's a, a lot younger. But when you see his face, when, when they show you his face, he looks old. He looks mm -hmm. older. Yeah. And so I was like, what were you seeing? Maybe yeah. it was the shock. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe she needed glasses because that, <laughs> that could change a lot. <laughs> so, so Max happens upon the, the car on the side of the road. He gets out. They tell Julie, you have to distract him. And so she's kind of distracting him. Um, Barry's pretending to puke over the guardrail. And really, they're just holding a dead weight body while Max is casually having a conversation with Julie and then she finally gets rid of him and they somehow make it all the way down those cliffs seem pretty high yeah and they somehow make it all the way down to a lovely dock to roll him into the water and as they are pushing him over he reaches up and grabs Helen's crown and because he's not dead no <laughs> so even more reason to go to the authorities you didn't actually kill anyone right when you could have literally been like he was in the middle of a windy road in like black were, in black like there was no way we could have prevented this um and does no one know how to check a pulse nowadays <laughs> <laughs> hold a, a mirror up to his mouth <laughs> <laughs> I, I it think... is ridiculous. It is utterly ridiculous. When you look back at it, it just seems <laughs> so silly. <laughs> and they need was... more, um, <laughs> like my favorite murder in their life. <laughs> like, learn how to get away with murdering yeah. someone <laughs> because they... this is the anti, uh, like the opposite of that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hundred like, percent. Why don't you just tie yourself up to actually get done for murder? <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. just like you could have left it, been fine. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's stuffed. <laughs> um, and so then, um, so he obviously is alive. He's he, they're throwing him in the water, and he's like, "I'm taking a trophy, bitch." Takes Helen's <laughs> wonderful crown. She's, I mean, I think that was the most emotion we saw after this with this whole ordeal you killed somebody <laughs> but you showed more emotion with your crown being taken 
Yes. <laughs> Which that made me a hundred percent identify with Helen because I would feel the same way. Um, I'm not judging. I'm just pointing it out. Helen. The, it. And like, it is a gorgeous crown. Yeah, it, it really is. is. <laughs> And like, Uh, yes, it does link them to him. So I could see a reason (laughs) to get it back. But I don't think Helen was panicking because of that. (laughs) No, it was just her crown is gone. Well, I think she was panicking because it was her crown. But I also think she was thinking about what am I going to do next year when they need it back and I have to crown the new person. So yeah, I think that's where her headspace was. Um, And then Barry went in to go get the crown. And this was another great opportunity for both of them to die and their problems would have been solved, but then the crown. So I was like, okay, he has to come back up with the crown at least. And the way that the guy was sinking, holding the crown still up, what's happening? I don't You're know anybody alive who now. be dead this much. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was literally like alive, holding his breath underwater and just let this guy who tried to kill you or <laughs> thought you were dead and was rolling your dead body into a into a ocean <laughs> and you're just gonna let him swim away like I don't I don't yeah. understand the fisherman's what his play were. Here. yeah <laughs> um the thing that we didn't see Jackie is in that moment the fisherman came up with his plan in oh. that moment when he was just being still with being one with with himself the water. yeah he said <laughs> I got a plan for these bitches. I'm going to get them. I'm going to wait a year. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm going to get a piece of paper and put it in an envelope and start this shit right. Yeah. I I (laughs) orchestrate the whole thing. Detail (laughs) by detail going through his head as he's near, near drowning. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. And this is about the time Jennifer Love Hewitt starts her eyeball acting. It's true. She, she acts it's true. so much with her eyeballs in this movie. I don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that's all you can say. In every movie she does, it's eyeball acting. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you're right. She does. And then there's another fight ensues. Yeah. I'm like, if you're trying to quietly be at the docks, get rid of a body. <laughs> Y'all are doing it wrong. Yeah. Because you're making a lot of noise. And leaving evidence behind as well. What was on the floor that they left? It was that little spinning thing. Yeah. From like, the, from the guy at the beginning. So then like yeah. layers. The necklace, isn't it? The chain or something? Yes. Yeah. 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 And there's like, layers to this mystery. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like a Scooby-Doo mystery. Okay. <laughs> Solve it real quick. Put Veronica Mars on the case. <laughs> So now it's a year later, Jennifer Love Hewitt is uh, finishing her first year in college. She looks terrible. Rough. (laughs) Rough. They're like, okay, the eyeball acting is all she can bring. Um, Makeup, (laughs) hair, costume. We got to pull, we got to show what she can't show in the eyeball acting. Yes. That she's depressed, that she's not right (laughs) in the head, that things aren't working for her. And so we hasn't kept in touch with these people that she committed a murder with. Yeah. (laughs) She's, she looks really bad. Yeah. Really bad. So then she's traveling home from college back to her hometown. Then we see, is it Helen next? Yeah. We see her interact with her mom and you see like her whole house and apparently her dad died but we don't know when her dad died so that's weird like and her mom's just like trying to figure out what's wrong with her but my sister had insight she's like when they were fighting with the nerd kid and then some of the things that they said to Freddie Prince Jr.'s character Mm -hmm. they were pretty much alluding that the rest of them were rich and he was like the only poor man out but if you go to every last one of them if you see their houses the only one who looks actually rich is Barry the rest of them uh, my sister's like I don't get it their house is like trash I was like yeah I don't understand (laughs) it either I there's no explanation I can give so maybe in a fishing town because if you're not a fisherman maybe that makes you like not wealthier yeah I was confused by that because that house looked like trash. All of their 
her house um and i thought barry's house when they showed the outside of it i'm like oh that must be where helen lives because they own the town department store yeah which they must be rolling in it (laughs) yet the department store was confusing (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what it's like in um over on your side of the world but here you know people love going antiquing and going to these small little towns or whatever and this is like the vibe this Mm -hmm. movie was giving but that store looked like a 1950s store like they hadn't upgraded it at all and it it looked really trashy didn't it It just looked like full of junk sort of like very old-fashioned junk yeah yeah it wasn't snazzy or and then formal wear on mannequins (laughs) yeah understand how much how much formal wear is happening in a little fishery town (laughs) i mean they were probably getting for (laughs) they were probably getting ready for the croaker queen awards yeah (laughs) so maybe i don't know um so yes you see well when does julie get the note when she gets home yeah her mom has a letter for her and gives it to julie after she just said i'm fine nothing's wrong i'm failing classes but i'm good you know like that um i haven't gets- showered in two <laughs> weeks <laughs> but i'm fine yeah it's totally okay she got the letter and has no return address no stamp which i feel like my mom would have been nosy enough to open like what the hell is this if mm-hmm. it didn't have same <laughs> and then she she would have called me like what did you do last summer because <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's just a note that says i know what you did last summer and i would really reply, panics i would have been like yeah i had a hot girl summer or quarantine <laughs> all day you know like <laughs> i didn't leave my house how about you yeah <laughs> So then um, she, that's why Julie goes to find Helen. Well, she goes to the department store to get Helen's New York number and Elsa, Helen's sister. It's like, she doesn't have a New York number. Hold on. And out walks Helen. She never even made it to New York. Yeah. And she's like, go check out the perfume counter. She over there. And she's, (laughs) she's like, not even doing, doing a good job at that. Yes. And so then they go to Barry's house, his mansion on the water. And he's got his wife beater tea on. I'm going to call it that because he had that whole vibe going. Yes. I did write down wife beater as a note in my. (laughs) Can we talk about how his mom heard him like literally yelling at two women and just was still on the phone? No problemo. Like, that's just Barry being Barry. (laughs) That's my boy. (laughs) You tell them. (laughs) Sarah Michelle Geller is wearing a very beautiful arm cuff in this scene. (laughs) It was so 90s, but it was so pretty. (laughs) Because fashion. (laughs) <laughs> at this time when this movie came out I had a hard time like vibing with the Helen character because I just knew Sarah Michelle Geller as Buffy and mm-hmm. I was like Buffy would never could never would never <laughs> I don't know what this is <laughs> but now after years of separation I could totally look at the character a little bit different and I didn't hate her as much she was abused she was yeah a- physically and mentally abused by her boyfriend her sister was horrible she had a hard life yeah I don't know it's like, true as, yeah and as as an adult I think Helen is the most interesting character she should have been the lead yes. character not Julie she is and she's a much better actress by far yeah yeah same yeah I mean can't um, go wrong with SMG she's always great yeah so Barry gets it in his head that it's Max Max is fucking with them and he's going to go put the fear in him. So he marches down to Max's place of work. (laughs) I mean. And says, we need to talk. Max says, okay, instead of get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. (laughs) Again, because Max thinks that he can 
hold his own like what delusions was this guy on like he's like yeah man let's square off whatever I'll take a break like no you need witnesses like what are you doing (laughs) man like you can't take roided out Barry (laughs) (laughs) I love that (laughs) that's that's definitely that should be his character name roided out (laughs) yep that needs to be on a shirt, roided out Barry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the best role of his career, roided out Barry. Yes. Yes. Ryan Filippi. Barry proceeds to scream in Max's face and then assaults him with an ice hook. Foreshadowing, apparently. Yeah, but I'm like, you scratched his face. That is assault. You should be in jail. Yeah, or off the roids. But Max is too dumb to do anything about it. You know, I don't think there's a death in this movie I felt bad about except for one. Same. We'll get to it. Yeah. Jennifer Love Hewitt then goes to find Ray, who's working on the boats, just like his daddy before him. His whole vibe in this movie was suspicious. And again, it's that red herring nonsense. And I'm like, you got Freddy freaking prince jr in your movie and you waste him we get roided out barry in every fucking scene but we get bit like we don't see him in like 70 percent of the movie yeah a waste a waste we have this really weird exchange which again we never we don't really know if they were ever really together but <laughs> at the end jennifer love hewitt tells him I don't blame you, but I don't want to know you either. Damn, that was, I mean, that had to be one of the harshest things, but it's close to, and I don't even watch The Hills, but when Lauren got in a fight with Heidi and she told Heidi, I forgive you, but I don't want to know you. It was, (laughs) that is like, that is. And apparently she stole her line from, I know what you did. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna make a tiktok video about that 100 percent. i'm the, glad the i'm parallels. your inspiration <laughs> oh, girl you're the light you're the wind beneath my wings <laughs> <laughs> and then shortly thereafter we see the demise of max the fisherman got him <laughs> he got i don't know him. why i i don't understand certain why people that the fisherman went after yeah fisherman. like fisherman. i it, why is he the first one? Like, why yeah. is he the first kill? Right. Out of all of them, he didn't really do anything. He just drove past. <laughs> <laughs> he, did. he just right. drove past with a douche and, that, and then drove off again. That's such a yeah. Thing. It's but super they, weird. It, but they do do that in- intentionally, though, because like up until he's murdered, the he really is a red herring. Where you really do yeah. think he could be the killer, but then he's killed, and you're like, oh well, fuck, it's not him. Who is it? <laughs> Right. Who else so you is on of, my list? You're, you're <laughs> kind of in the have... same position as, as the characters then because you don't know who the killer is as much as they don't know who the killer is. Yeah. yeah. But it probably would have been better to keep him hanging around though. So you did wonder if it was him and put yeah. him in some odd situations because killing him off and then then what they do with him next just seems so strange. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so Anybody strange. down for some crab boils? Okay. <laughs> Trunk so crab? Then... No, thank you. <laughs> No thanks. Oh, man. So then the next scene is Barry working out at the gym. Of course. That's what roided out Barry does. <laughs> <laughs> and so we get a gratuitous, I put a T in there, a gratuitous shower scene with Barry. At this very moment, my sister is saying, asking me like how tall he is because we're now thinking he's a short man. And so then I'm not even looking at him without a shirt. I'm literally Googling how tall Ryan Philippi <laughs> is. And he's 5'9 for anyone wanting to know. So he's not that tall. My mom asked the same question. How tall is he? <laughs> <laughs> because I guess in the book, he's supposed to be like this very large looming man. And he's supposed to be like 6'2 and very intimidating. And then you get, short kind of scrawny ryan Philippe. like he he has muscles he's just not built like a football player would be. yeah 
Bill. Honestly, I know we don't like the character, but we do have to give Ryan Phillippe credit because he did do a good acting job because we fucking yeah. hate him. This, this is, is true. true. Yeah. We know the That's writing true. wasn't great. We know the direction wasn't great. So we have <laughs> to say he brought that he brought that with him to the set. Yes. Acting skills. Um, he probably should have just switched it and had Sarah Michelle Geller and Ryan Phillippe be the main characters and those other two non-acting people be the secondary characters. That's probably why they ended up in Cruel Intentions together because it was mm-hmm. after I know what you did last summer. So obviously the, the being seen together, then they're like pinched and put in Cruel Intentions because they were amazing in that together. Yes, it is. But, they actually but, couldn't find somebody for, they were having a hard time um, fit, filling those roles. And one of the producers for this movie was actually on the movie and said, you know what? I think these two will be great. And that's how that happened. So you're spot on, Eliza, that instinct. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect casting. <laughs> I feel like we need to watch I Still Know What You Did Last Summer to see if the acting and the chemistry improved at all in the second it doesn't, movie. My heart. <laughs> I watched it today and it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being our guinea pig, Eliza. <laughs> I put it on while I was working, might I add. While I had some, I was, Je- Jess, I promise I was working, but I put it on in the background. <laughs> and I just was glancing at it and I was like, oh God, this is even, this is even worse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I knew I was I I did not like the movie because at that time I didn't like Brandy so I was like I'm not down for this <laughs> yeah I like her music but she's not she's not the greatest actress but then no. she fits in well with the rest of the cast yeah. <laughs> neither are they yeah so it's fine it merges yeah. in and Mackay the dad- has come a long way since I still yeah. know what you did last summer poor Mackay he's probably the only real actor amongst them and then the guy the dad the guy who played the dad in Gossip Girl is in that movie too yes oh he is he's yes won't say anymore but yes he is he is in that isn't he (laughs) yeah will will isn't it will character will yeah and so now we see barry's jacket is gone and his car keys are gone so he's trying to figure out (laughs) what happens he walks outside he sees his car has someone in it like backs way up if I see one. someone in my car backing up with my keys, am I standing there in the street? No, the bitch is going back inside. Why does he <laughs> run straight? <laughs> run to the right or the left where you can like get behind a building, Barry. Barry. I don't he- understand. You are not a machine. You are not going to outrun this car. He He's has- on roids though. But- he can yeah. do it. He yeah. can oh, do it. We did out Barry could do it. Yes, yeah, it's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and then this car punts him through a building and he only breaks his arm. <sighs> no internal it's the roids. It's the roids. Oh, that's they true. Protect him. <laughs> they protect him. <laughs> it was like, roid power, activate. <laughs> <laughs> and the fisherman looms over him, but doesn't kill him like he kills everyone else. Yeah, I don't understand this. He Is doesn't he waiting- learn from his brush with death. I think it's that he's <laughs> waiting for the actual 4th of July. He has to do it oh. on the anniversary. Th- that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Because then why steal his car and do he's that whole trying thing? to? He's playing with his food, you know? Like how animals on the prey, like when they know they've got you, they can play with you. That That's what he's doing. But what if he kill is- Max though? He kills Max yeah. before the Fourth of July. Is that because he's not one of the killers? The killers. I, I, you know, it's I weird. don't know. I honestly, it would have been something if Max secretly had saw them. I made a whole plot to make this make sense. <laughs> if Max had had saw them, followed them to the docks, mm-hmm. saw what happened, went and saved him, and said, "I hate those guys. Let's mess with them." But then you know, two people can keep a secret if the other one's dead, he kills them to just shut him up so he doesn't, you know, talk. <laughs> that There you go, plot hole fixed. But that's not what happened. We don't, I think we're just supposed to take it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Disappointing. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so now they're in the hospital visiting Barry and they're talking about like what's going on and he's still roided out because he is yelling at them some more. Oh my gosh. 
or he's know. coming down <laughs> off of his eye because he can't get it because he's in the hospital. Like how <laughs> how did no turkey. one else go running into that room when he's yelling and, and carrying on like yes. that? Yeah. Maybe they're just used to him by now. It's like, oh, yeah. it's just worried about Barry. Like, yeah. just, you know, we're all desensitized <laughs> to it. Even the nurses are like, oh, yeah, it's just worried about Barry. Just, just ignore it. <laughs> yeah. I think Shouting they, at everybody. His family must own the whole damn town because everyone yeah. just seems to cower mm-hmm. to his tantrums and antics. So that's my guess. So now Julie and Helen have a plan. <laughs> and their plan is to go. Julie has figured out who the dead guy is. Yeah, so she thinks. Yes. I can't even remember his name. Something Egan. David David Egan. Thank you. David Egan. They look up his address and they're going to just go out there and feel out the family. (laughs) Feel out this grieving family. And can we talk about the nerve of Helen to call where they live the sticks? Bitch, where do you think you live? (laughs) (laughs) Y'all Your department in- store is not a department store. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got two stories. Whoop de doo. So did the other lady. Your house looks like trash. Her house looks like trash. I I, I just didn't. It's in the sticks. Like, okay. <laughs> you mean down the street? <laughs> so they go out there. They fake a uh, some car trouble and go to ask to use the phone pre cell phones. <laughs> Yeah, so many of these movies would never make it with in the in this age because you'd be like, well, why didn't you text somebody? You know, but yeah, <laughs> just be asking for a charger, wouldn't you? Can I just yeah. charge my phone? Yeah, that'd be the yeah. only reason you'd stop. <laughs> and we're we were met by Anne Hache in in this scene, and she out of all the acting, best, the best by Without far, the best. Mm. She really yeah. scared me. <laughs> In her yeah. weird children of the corn outfit. <laughs> <laughs> She's so welcoming too. These bitches are asking you a lot and you're just like giving answers and you're not, you're not objecting. You're not asking like, why are you being so nosy? Like nothing. Yes. It's just like, come in for some tea. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you all about my brother's suicide. I would like to show you to my doll room when it's over. Like... <laughs> 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 oh and i love sarah michelle geller's characters um directions because that's how i give directions <laughs> turn right where back there <laughs> <laughs> me <laughs> <laughs> they get the info that they need and they find out that a high school friend had visited the house what's billy the name? blue yeah is that his name yeah it is yeah. Yeah. Um, and and, and so, she has like a thing with him, which I was like, I peeped this. You had a thing. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Missy, played by Anne Hache, comes and almost punches through the window to knock on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very aggressive window knock. Right. To let them know they had forgotten their cigarettes. I, again, there's so now when you're watching it and you're not scared, because I was legitimately scared when I saw this movie in the theater as a young teenager, like an idiot. But also, <laughs> also, I did preface that I am a scaredy cat. And I will tell, we're getting close to the part that was the scariest for me. And my sister ridiculed and mocked me endlessly <laughs> when I told her. But I think the reason she was knocking so aggressively was to give jump scares, you know. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Now we are in Helen's house. She gets home from work. She pours herself a Diet Coke. What the hell's wrong with her dad? He's just yeah. an asshole, I think. But he doesn't even, like, is he alive? <laughs> he's like in catatonic or something pretty yeah. much right? because they lost their mother didn't they so did they lose their mother I th- and so it- helen's lost her father so it's like a sort of these parents who are almost slightly catatonic yeah grief was- catatonic like not and- noticing what their kids are doing or something i don't know and ray it's lost odd. his father or his father left him and maybe mm-hmm. died i don't know she goes upstairs to go goes well, to bed. she has that interaction with her sister oh yeah she's so brushing we- her wonderful wig Yes. Of, of cat hair. Yeah. We, we... <laughs> <laughs> it does look like cat hair to me. 
And it, like, yeah, that interaction with her sister, just so you really know that they hate each other. It's the not even, still strong. It's not, I don't think Helen hates her sister. Her sister hates her. And Helen is just like, whatever, bro. So intense though. It's like so nasty to watch. I, you don't yes. enjoy watching it because yeah. it's just too much. Yeah. It's just too, too antagonistic the whole time just gets like, without reason i mean she's just a toxic jealous person you know and <laughs> <laughs> she just like really just hates helen for no reason it's That's just hard it doesn't, it doesn't add anything to the story though. no That's no like, it's not like mean lies. girls mean right. girls is funny so when they're toxic it's horrendous at times but mean girls regina can be quite funny yeah but with this this was toxic without even like being particularly entertaining and the actress didn't seem dedicated to it as well you could tell it actually hurt her feelings to 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 do this because she too probably didn't know what's my motivation like there was none you know women being women duh you know men (laughs) but this is the scene that's that put that left a mark on my life the scene of Helen going to bed and waking up and our hair being cut off Mm -hmm. to this day, I cannot go to sleep with my closet door open. It must be closed. (laughs) It must be closed because I, in my rational brain, I believe if someone's coming to cut all my hair off, because that's the worst (laughs) thing that can happen. Um, (laughs) I can hear the closet door open. At least I get a jump start. Right. And then you don't have to punch your mirror. Right. (laughs) She wakes up, all her hair is cut off, and then she walks over to her mirror and Oh Helen. Oh Helen, I'm so sorry for your loss, baby girl. That cat hair wig was awful, but to lose to wake your hair that that look, oh man. And who did she go to? Which hairdresser did she go to? Because she was out there trying to find a killer for like half the day before she could yeah. go on, on the on the parade boat. Yeah, she shoves her hair in a hat. Yeah. And goes on her merry way because she has things to do. Right around the time I'm assuming Helen is waking up and discovering her hair is all chopped off. Julie is getting in her car. <laughs> And she keeps hearing this scratching noise and she's like, oh, that's weird. And I would have turned the music up. If I hear anything in my car and I'm not ready to like actually go fix it, I turn the music up. (laughs) Don't have money for whatever that noise is. Nope. And I'm like, I will find out. And hopefully I don't, I I do a prayer. Jesus, you got me. Jesus, take the wheel. And that's it. Turn that volume up. So I wouldn't even notice the crabs. Good luck, killer guy. (laughs) So Julie pulls over, pops the trunk, and there's Max in her trunk, covered in crabs. Damn. Is this a metaphor? Damn, he had it. <laughs> he had it for sure. <laughs> Another warning, girls, keep your legs closed. So now Julie is pissed. She's not even, I mean, she screams when she sees Max, but now she's just mad. And so she gathers everyone together, stomps around in the middle of the road and screams, what are you waiting for? In the low tank top. And it's probably the best scene of their movie. It really is. And what did we find out, Jackie? What did we find uh, out about this scene? It was directed by a kid who won a contest. (laughs) So that whole scene was set up he got to decide I guess what was going to happen in that scene (laughs) and he was able to direct that scene and it I mean out of everything I think he was 13 years old 13 years old giving us the best scene in this movie that should tell you a whole lot (laughs) really does (laughs) and it's the most memorable scene of the movie like if you are playing charades that is the that's what you're going to well whatever it is where you can actually play a game and you could say like a quote because I think trades you're not allowed to talk but um, the only acting she does in the film is it It really is and and maybe it's because she got real direction I'm just saying (laughs) maybe that's it (laughs) so you just need a 13 year old 
Yeah. Yes. No, that sounds wrong. <laughs> that sounds really weird. She's a 13 year old director. Well. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. In my notes, I said, Barry, jump into conclusions again. So does he think it's Ray this time? Who is Barry accusing this time? Barry was trying to be in the Ray, Olympics the amount I of think. times he was jumping to a conclusion. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he punches Ray, doesn't he? So he thinks yes. it's Ray. He gets so many punches in. Yeah. So, I'm like, dude. And Ray punks up again. Like, yeah. here's another chance for you to step the F up. And you just, you're just there. It's not me, man. Worded out there is at it again. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're at the parade. Barry's sitting on the float. And Helen is sitting very nervously in a clamshell. <laughs> With her beautiful crown and that gorgeous dress. Yes. yes. And then brand new haircut that doesn't look like cat hair. It was a it was a, a really <laughs> great like step up. It really was. Helen is panicked. She's not enjoying herself on the float at all. She's just wildly looking around, trying to see, but she is in a town of fishermen. There's (laughs) everyone in hats and slickers. And then she finally sees the man and she's like, Barry, there he is. Because she's (laughs) not creating a scene on a float in the middle of a 4th of July parade or anything. (laughs) So he goes and I'm pretty sure that old man had a heart attack afterwards. (laughs) He didn't take it well, did he? You seem terrified. And when he realized it wasn't the guy, he was still holding him though. Did you notice that? (laughs) Just like, oh, I don't know what to do now. My roids (laughs) stopping. (laughs) (laughs) He's just like in full He-Man mode, except without the muscles, pretty much. Oh, wow. Now Helen has to present the tiara to the new winner of what is this contest called or beauty pageant? The Croker Queen. The Croker Queen. So she, we're right back in the position how the movie started Mm -hmm. where Barry is in the rafters watching Helen on the stage. And this is where I get really frustrated because- yes. So Helen can kind of see it's really dark and obviously the spotlights are in her eyes. So she's kind of trying to bob and weave and see if she could see Barry because I guess just seeing him just makes her feel like she's safe. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, she does see the killer behind Barry and she's trying to scream for him Mm -hmm. and it's too late. And um, the the fisherman is just going, going for hooks. Yes. Yeah. It's and, the 4th uh, of July. Yeah. He's, this he's, is my independence day. Order up. He's <laughs> going for it, you know? And Helen proceeds to start screaming bloody murder and mm-hmm. freaking out. And she starts to proceed to run down the aisle of the auditorium to like run towards Barry. And all these people start putting their hands on her and holding her back. Yeah. What? Mm. I'm screaming. That was weird. I'm a crazy person. You don't know if I got a knife. I might shank you. What are you touching me for? Why are you holding me back? What is this? Also, if you've seen a murder and you're trying to tell people I've seen a murder, why why wouldn't they be looking to see if there is a murder as opposed to kind of holding her back? Yeah, it's really weird. She's making it quite vocal, like he's being murdered. (laughs) Help. (laughs) I'm not doing anything. It's weird. It's weird. And the fisherman is very, very efficient at cleaning up after himself. Yeah. How do you get all that blood so quickly? Well, so he takes all the crabs and Max out of the back of Julie's car while she goes to get Helen. Yeah. He's very fast. He's very fast. He can hold his breath for a long time. He can be hit blunt force trauma and still walk around and be fine they go up to the the balcony to investigate once they calm helen down because that's what she needed in that moment right a man to tell her to calm down hysterical women honestly just women in their hysteria yeah can't control themselves (laughs) in the words of my mother (laughs) i don't get it where's the body where's the mess where's barry (laughs) <laughs> and then she goes well Barry was expendable <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about it okay so he's got Barry he mm-hmm. cleans it up how does he have enough time to go store Barry's body where he stores Barry, Barry's body and then come back to stalk essentially in the, he's in the streets again to find Helen 
How, he's what Michael the, Myers. The, the, he's basically Michael Myers. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's just like he can't be defeated. But maybe, maybe there was more than one fisherman operating. That's what oh. I like. They should have made it two yeah. two killers like they do in Scream, because yeah. it there's just there's no way, old man, you're this you're this fast. Yeah, and fit. Yeah, like bodies are heavy, and you yeah. just they are like picking them up like they're nothing, like rag dolls. Yeah, especially <laughs> roided out bear. You know there was some weight to that one. <laughs> You know, he wasn't just hooking him and dragging him. You know, there there was some hefty living, lifting in that one. Yeah. <laughs> and so while all of this is going on, Julie takes it upon herself to go alone <laughs> back, back to, to Missy's to find out more information. Missy's just chilling with all her dead animals. I don't know why she has to kill so many things if she's living alone. <laughs> How much food she making? Yeah. I mean, it would have made sense if she was helping her dad out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but true. But I suppose it's, you know, (laughs) it's more, it's more interesting to wonder what's going on in that woodshed as well. Yeah. I'm always intrigued by what she's got in that woodshed that we don't (laughs) see. I'm like, what is, is the dad in there? What's he doing in there? It's her doll room. Is he dead? A hundred percent. The doll heads. Because that's what I imagine. And it's just heads. (laughs) 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 Again. Julie asks really invasive questions about this lady's deceased brother and how, like, how did he kill himself? Who was his girlfriend? I'm like, stop harassing this (laughs) grieving sister that just wants to be alone in the sticks to like kill animals. And she was really open with her answers because she's like, I couldn't say that I found a note and I couldn't say that my brother like killed himself because the insurance wouldn't give me money. Like what if I was an insurance company saying, you know what, we find some disparities in her store Mm -hmm. and we're going to catch her. And she's just like out there telling strangers her whole master plan (laughs) of insurance fraud. But she was holding a knife at the same time. So maybe that was her end plan, you know? (laughs) Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Yeah, but the she fact she's that... got the note in that shed. Sorry, I was just gonna say the fact the note <laughs> no, right. is right there. But when she's having a conversation, it's like two meters away, not even that. They're <laughs> ready in the shed to bring out. It's just like so okay. weird. Why would you keep it in a shed? But you know. And then she holds that knife like she's never held a knife before. <laughs> even though she's cutting up animals and doll heads. <laughs> that whole scene was so bizarre and unnecessary. Like you could have just gotten all that information the first time and been done with, done with it. it. Yeah. But then they wouldn't have thought it was one, um, her brother, they would have known it was the fisherman, which yeah. we find out that the note looks exactly like the note um, Julia originally got in the beginning. So mm-hmm. the handwriting matches. Cause now she's like a handwriting expert. Um <laughs> And she realizes that it couldn't have been this, her brother, because she, she does, she goes to the library and does some looking around and figures out that that guy actually got in a car accident with this girl, his girlfriend, and she died. And the father of the girlfriend was hella mad. And so now she's put two and two together that the father actually killed Um, Missy's brother who they thought was a killer um, and whose body washed up ashore who she originally thought killed they they killed Um, and then from and and the reason why she puts it together is because the body that they dump into the ocean has a tattoo of an anchor with the name Susie on it right and the sister goes he never had a tattoo so that kind of confirms along with the note that oh barking up the wrong tree my yeah. bad <laughs> may my, start my bad for coming and bringing it putting salt in the wounds of your dead brother thanks yeah. for the info though i'm out <laughs> audi 2000s <laughs> now we are back to helen <laughs> in the back of a cop car the cop is trying to help her and what does she do when she sees the killer she distracts the cop She's screaming at him. So he turns around to look at crazy person in the back of his cop car instead of looking in front of him where this fisherman is going to attack him. First and foremost, the cop deserved to die anyways because he was such a dick. <laughs> like another honestly. toxic male. 
Yeah, yes. that's a toxic male. Okay, calm down, little lady. I'm going to drive you home real quick. You know, like, he's just <sighs> ugh, a douche. <laughs> And he was a horrible cop because he was not prepared for anything. Murder. Yeah. <laughs> no. And I don't know how, I, I guess it has to be because it was the nineties that Helen was able to break through that um, cop. She's cause mm-hmm. she's in the back seat, so she can't open the door. And so she like buffies her way. That's what I'm going to call it. Buffies yes. her way out of the car. <laughs> Yeah. She had those sensible heels on yeah, so that she could bust out of that back window. And I feel like cop cars are not that easy to bust out of the windows nowadays. Mm-hmm. So I just, I'm like, okay, maybe it's just back then it was a little bit easier. And then she's, she, she goes to, she goes to running and um, she's really good at it. Yeah. All that Buffy training. Yep. She attracts and her. And starts banging on the door of the department store. <sighs> oh my. Her sister. <laughs> doesn't give a fuck nope she's like this bitch hold on oh i forgot the key (laughs) saunters over the door casually unlocks it meanwhile her sister is hysterical on the other side of the door immediately slams the door shut locks it and is like you have to go lock that back door then elsa casually walks into the back and locks the door but it's too late fisherman's yeah. already inside yeah she and she when you say casually like her sister's like yelling at her go to the back like look i don't care if i'm mad at my sister or something is going on when you feel that heightened like something is going on you you go into to mm. quick mode and yeah. the way she reacted was just so ridiculous and another death i didn't give a shit about yeah i don't care and, yeah bye elsa and and poor uh helen she's you know she finds out that the fisherman's in the department store and she sees her sister's dead body and she starts screaming and i was just like what what are we wasting this energy for (laughs) (laughs) don't mourn that bitch yeah (laughs) move on good run away (laughs) so she's now trying to get away from the killer who she is locked in a a department store with and apparently you need a key to lock the inside and the outside and so it's not like she could just run to a door and unlock it i feel like she had such the advantage of of working and owning that freaking store you don't know a yes. little you didn't play in the store when you were little and have a little secret pathway like nothing yeah nothing she jumping out of windows and going into garbage cans yes <laughs> and she takes the slowest means up to the top ever. <sighs> She's in that dumb waiter and just like her little arms are working and she is going nowhere. <laughs> and he's <laughs> walking up the sca- stairs at Not a even running. serial killer pace, meets her at the top of the stairs. Yeah. Like literally they get to the top at the same time. Jesus. Like that was not a great plan. No. And then- what really does her in she looks back yep i don't know if you're a bible reader but there's a whole story about you keep walking and you don't look back it's in the bible so (laughs) i mean whether you're religious or not those things kind of like teach you lessons at some point and (laughs) don't look back what you're looking back for if if you if he gets you he gets you there's no need to look back you keep running that's it if Don't you're still it. looking forward then he hasn't caught you yet exactly <laughs> she literally almost gets away she can see the parade happening which this is a long ass parade if she was in the parade <laughs> yes! went through yes! the entire croaker queen ceremony watched her boyfriend be killed <laughs> went to the department store saw her sister killed and was still being chased and the parade still going on yeah because when she gets to the street where her department store is on it's completely black nobody yes. out there so you're just telling me everybody's the after party the let out is just on the other the other block is that what's <laughs> happening <laughs> and she literally is maybe 20 feet from being in a, a, a crowd of people that can hopefully protect her and 
she stops and she looks back <laughs> and that's all it takes <laughs> in an alleyway in. as well like who does that in an alleyway like yeah. you just get out of an alleyway you don't stop yes. and look around <laughs> i do want to note that she did put up a hell of a fight she did once he mm. caught her she didn't just like oh, wow. oh he, <laughs> like that out of all of the deaths and a lot of female deaths in horror movies I feel like she she was like Tatum in Scream where she was just she was yeah. gonna fight until she didn't have any fight left yeah she did I mean she did good now Julie's on the dock looking for Ray I just uh, want to pause in a moment of silence that this literally was my the saddest death for me and I was done being invested in the movie the movie could end it right here I was fine <laughs> once Helen died because that was the only character yes. that I felt any kind of tie yeah. to yeah agree yeah, yeah. Helen so, was the best character without a doubt yes yes we need a whole movie of just Helen yeah I guess we have yes. Buffy so yeah. we really don't but yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it either way whatever prior to this Julie goes to her laptop and does more research and figures out that the father of Susie whose name is Benjamin Willis is still alive and that he is probably avenging the death of his daughter and him getting not his daughter as much as because he's already avenged the death of his oh, daughter true. he's avenging the fact that these little privileged ass bitches hit him on the road put him to drown and didn't look back yes. that's what he's avenging and it's established that he doesn't mind killing because no. he killed the boyfriend a year later. Yeah. Julie goes to tell Ray this information. Which I thought was weird that she goes to tell Ray and not find Helen. Yeah. Well, Helen, she knew Helen was just fulfilling her queen, her yeah, but croaker you, queen obligations. You've literally told Ray that you don't want to know him. And you find out this really important information. Why not run to Helen and Barry, who you've kind of been in cahoots about this whole thing since you got back home? It doesn't make sense that she runs to Ray. Who knows? Make it make sense. I'm just, that's all I'm saying. I was confused <laughs> well, and by then this. She is adamant. She has figured out who this person is. Goes to Ray. Ray acts like the tiniest bit dodgy. And <laughs> she's immediately like, <laughs> you're the killer get away from me what what <laughs> i don't understand it's like her paranoia has gone off the charts so you've got like hysterical helen and then paranoid julie it's like yes. all the tropes about women they could possibly put in that we're all neurotic mentalists right. blaming men for everything it's just ridiculous it's just ridiculous and it, it, it's also super weird that like she freaks out about him being the friend that goes to see missy he's what is it what is it something blue billy blue, billy blue. Mm -hmm. i i i don't know like i was like was she mad that her ex-boyfriend slept with this weirdo because that's that's what happened he went <laughs> he felt guilty he figured out all the things julie figured out and he started having a relationship with the crazy lady in the sticks and automatically she's like you're the killer what <laughs> yeah <laughs> stupidity and then She's running across the docks and then magically this other man happens to be in the docks. He's like, let me help you. And he tells her to get on the boat. What? No, I need you to open the lock of this, this gate. That's the yeah. only part. Like, that's all I need. I need to just get out. Like, get, I'm not going. Why does she go on his boat again? And she's like, okay. I <laughs> feel like from this dude that five seconds ago, I knew it was another person but now i'm suspicious of this guy I used to have a relationship maybe not hard to tell <laughs> and now i'm just gonna jump on some stranger's boat who's knocked ray out makes no sense yeah it's almost as if he just took catnip or snacks or treats and just shook it like you would and the cat would just come <laughs> to you because it, it didn't make any sense <laughs> like i'm gonna so just good Oh, no, what I was going to say is when you've got the stereotype of the final girls, you know, it's something you've either got the tough one who's fighting all the way through, a bit like the Helen one, 
or the one who's supposed to lead the film, but is so ridiculous and walks into every single mistake possible, every single precarious situation. She's probably the worst one I've seen in a long time. When yes. I've been rewatching all these horrors, it's like everything she does is wrong. Is just wrong and daft. And <laughs> I can't believe the guy who wrote Scream wrote this. I just can't see. And, yes. he, and he wrote it first. He wrote this movie before Scream and he tried to shop it around and, and couldn't get a bite. And and I'm just like, that should have told you something, bro. <laughs> the only but reason this movie yep, got nope. greenlit is because Scream did so well. I, I 100% yeah. believe that. Yeah. No, it, yep. that is true, without a doubt. And the writer of the book, the YA book that this is based on, was hella mad about this movie because her book was not gory, was not a horror kind of thing. And the way that he just made it so bloody and, and it, she was mad and very vocal about it mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. But how her. could you even make this movie without the permission of the person that wrote the book? Like, I don't understand. It's pretty, it's pretty bizarre to be perfectly honest. And it's, yeah. you need, it's like Stephen King when he goes on about how he hates The Shining. You do yes. kind of get to a point where you're like, maybe you should just let people <laughs> enjoy the film yeah. and right. not go on about it so much. But also at the same time, you've got to respect the writer. So yeah. it's yeah. a bit difficult. Well, I think it just depends on how much of a role does the writer have in the production of the movie. So there's writers who will sign a movie deal, right? I, I don't know how much when they're signing that deal that they're like a producer or not, or if they're just saying, okay, I will let you use my characters and whatever and go about your business so now we are on a random fisherman's boat number one how did she know which boat to get on um she he invited her into his boat but he he was was standing on the dock near ray and he said get on my boat the whole the whole pier is full of boats I i thought he was I thought he brought her in, but who knows? Another plot hole. No, because she had an opportunity to get on the boat and get so far inside the boat, she found his creepy murder wall. (laughs) (laughs) And what I don't understand is Ray just looks flabbergasted and fucking stands on the dock for I don't know how long, because how long does it take for the boat to really get out to the seat, like where it was at that point? And like, jump into the water. <laughs> His weapon is a, a, a hook. It's, he's not going to be able to have that swing power if he's treading water. Like, just jump into the water and swim back to the dock. Don't stay on the boat. Yeah, Julie's a dumbass. Um, <laughs> Such a dumbass. <laughs> I don't have any other words besides that. And then like the things she does. Okay, so she finds out, she confronts him. And what I really hate in these movies is that no one thinks, let me get a weapon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. There are so You're many You're on a things. fishing boat. Yeah, and she doesn't. And so like she's on the boat and Ray, we, the- it pans to him and he's still on the dock he's bewildered. <laughs> dumbfounded bewildered looking like lost as hell and he finally computes like duh, 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 duh. i got to do something there's a little boat let me get on it it's just like what's happening right now people and so he takes his little boat to go catch up with the boat they're on and the guy's trying to kill Julie. And what does she do? Like you said, instead of jumping into the water and taking her chances, she she's like, climbs into the boiler room. I'm just going to keep crawling as far as I can get. And I'm going to try to block these entrances and exits with ice and see my dead friends and scream. <laughs> even there was a lot, of screaming. A, lot of screaming. a lot of screaming. A lot of screaming. And did you know that that second door that she goes into like like to the ice room i'm not familiar with boats i'm sure all of these little rooms have names but (laughs) i don't know any of them apparently when they shot it they weren't great about the continuity and so in some shots she had her little camisole on Mm -hmm. and in other shots she didn't so they had to make that scene in between the two rooms where she had to use her camisole to open the other door mm-hmm. so that the rest of the shots there wasn't that continuity who was running this goddamn movie like <laughs> come on 
It's not even like the small. Literally a person whose whole job it is to ensure continuity. It's not difficult either. I've done it on films before. It's not difficult (laughs) at all. It's like you take a a photo of someone, you check them before the scene, you check after. It's all you need to do. Yeah. It's so easy. And it's it's not like oh, they were holding a can in the, uh, in this shot and then shot reverse shot and the cans turned suddenly or something. Like this is a pretty glaring error in the continuity of this movie. Anyway, just wanted to throw that in. And so now <laughs> she's in this like ice room, ice space, whatever, climbing over her friend's dead bodies. Yes. And you see and the ice jiggle because it's actually made of gelatin. Yeah. Oh, it's so distracting. It's so distracting. <laughs> it's horrible. And well, she- we need J Love to be comfortable. She can't be in a room full of ice. Oh, God. oh that's true. <laughs> She's too precious and special. She can't she do it. <laughs> <laughs> she can't. And then she gets to this great. And Ray gets on the boat and he finds her. I don't know how he finds her and not the killer first. And he's trying to help pull up the the, the door thing to let Julie out. And here comes Hookman, you know, crashing at them or whatever. And she's like and yelling. Again, a girl distracting <laughs> yes. the dude so that he gets injured. Yeah. Yeah. Well, does that happen after she finally gets out? Because I I thought he... No, because she stays down there and the fisherman puts that basket with the chain on top so she can't get out. So she's like popping it open and screaming at Ray and distracting him from fighting. And then she gets trapped in the the fucking room down below because she's an idiot. Yeah. And... uh... I would have been like, okay, if he's distracted right now, I can crawl back the way I came in and get the hell mm-hmm. out of here. And Ray, you can't t- take this old man? Really? <laughs> Again, another character without trying to find a weapon. Yeah. I well, just... he does pick up a long pole with a hook on it, but he kind of just like half-heartedly jabs at the fisherman and the fisherman's <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing with this shit? And just takes it out of his hand and tosses it to the side. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I'm not invested. I, I'm hoping all three of them die. I So Ray gets <laughs> knocked the off boat. the boat. Sink yes. the boat. <laughs> let, as we said in Titanic, let the bitch sink. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so Ray gets knocked off the boat. He grabs onto this net that's trailing behind the boat. Do his pants come off in the water? <laughs> What, what fell off of him in the water? Currents, <laughs> man, it's what they do. You drag your pants off. Oh, wow. And so he's, I mean, obviously he has some strength. He's been working as a fisherman for a year. So he's dragging himself up the fishnet to get back on the boat. And then there's a lot more eye acting as the, the fisherman is trying to break in to get to (laughs) j-love and so the the end scene is the fisherman puts his hand up to kill julie by some miracle (laughs) the rope falls perfectly around his arm and yanks him up to the top where it goes through a pulley and his hand gets chopped off and he becomes officially captain hook what she was he aiming does. for the whole yeah. movie. He does. <laughs> and he falls into the water. And again, they didn't make sure he was fucking dead. No. No. Nope. So that leaves us nope. open for. I still I know still what, know you, what did you did last, last summer. summer. <laughs> <laughs> and at the very end, Julie's back at school, but she's happy. She's showering. Yeah, she's everything's tanned. <laughs> yeah, my, I didn't kill somebody. My two best friends are dead, but whatever. Dead weight. Me and Ray are fantastic. And I don't <laughs> oh, think they're going to go on now. Yeah, in the next a real couple movie. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Oh, cool. And then we have this ending scene where, see, I would still be paranoid. If that man, if we didn't find a body, which the cops asked them, do you know why this guy was attacking you? They're like, and unison, no. 
<laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, she goes and she has this huge shower scene, which I think is just an excuse to have J Love in a towel. Yes. She gets another note. I still know what you did last summer. Dun, dun, mm-hmm. dun. And she goes into this steamy bathroom, which no one else is in. And he he comes diving through some mirror. And I'm like, wait, how does this? I want to now watch the second movie because how does this scene transition into the second movie? Because yeah. what the? It doesn't. Or- <laughs> <laughs> doesn't at all. It doesn't. <laughs> I watched it today and was like, oh, right. Okay. That just, that didn't happen. Then just forget oh, about it. It was Pretend a fever it dream, dream of yep. Julie. Yeah. Dream. <laughs> oh my God. Just a nightmare. It's just one of those nightmares that yeah. she wakes up from. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm yeah. still trying to wake up from this movie. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if there's anything else um, that we missed that we missed uh Anne Hayes said she, all she recalls about the movie is it's being two days worth of work that required her to be scary in quotes <laughs> she nailed the be scary thing she did, she did. she's like a female leather face she was really kind of like I was waiting yeah. for her to suddenly yes. get like the mask out and do something a bit creepy and um the chase scene involving helen is regarded as one of the best chase scenes in a horror film by many horror slasher film fans what do you guys think do you agree with that one of the best (laughs) um i don't think it was one of the best it wasn't bad but i i wouldn't it's not memorable yeah that's exactly it i i would never have even put it in a list i wouldn't have thought of i would have thought drew barrymore in screen yes I love yes. that opening is one of the best ever for a slasher, but no, definitely yeah. not. I know what you did last summer. I, and I love Sarah Michelle Gellar, absolutely adore her. Yeah. And I forgot about it to be perfectly honest, watching it again. I was like, oh yeah, she does a great job in this, but yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Hadn't I agree cared with before. That. <laughs> I agree. Like it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't for me. It wasn't suspenseful at all. No. I, I'm really like, I was a real punk because I don't know what I was scared about at all. <laughs> <laughs> my my sister was like, this is not a scary movie. What is It's this? not. It's no, no, not at all. It's and no. I think that's why I was fine with horror movies in the 90s because they were not like the screams and the I know what you did last summer and the urban legends. They were not really scary. No, they're they more were. slasher films. They're yeah. not in like the a lot of jump scares in them but on yeah. the whole not really intended to be like a very suspenseful on your, the edge of your seat the entire time yeah you're not gonna have nightmares from them it's not no. something psychological or really you know a cult or satanism or anything yes. that might get you more yeah no with a slasher it's like and you can it's it's always a sort of like a murder thing by numbers, a slasher by mm-hmm. numbers. You know what's going to happen. You know where the, the scares are coming from. So you're kind of desensitized to it as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, I just don't want my hair to be cut off. No, that was real. It was real yeah. to me. Yeah, I get that. That's I'm tapping saying. into real fears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, that's a psychological thing. <laughs> that's that's always worse than, than a slasher jump, jump scare thing. Jennifer Love Hewitt had just finished House Arrest with Jamie Lee Curtis. So Jamie Lee yeah, Curtis, nice like, oh, you meant she really had been under House Arrest. Sorry, <laughs> I genuinely forgot about that film. It's like, she was yeah. under House Arrest. I don't remember she that. Was wearing a, she was wearing a tracker this whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> they caught the her finally. House Arrest. Yeah. They caught her for bad acting. She, she, she needed to be, yeah, definitely. So she couldn't be in this film. Oh my word! I genuinely thought. Sorry, I <laughs> this, this thing about. <laughs> so yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis, because they had just shot that movie, would come over and check on. We come to the set. I hope she didn't give Jennifer pointers because <laughs> either her pointers were poor or Jennifer just relied on that eyeball acting she just was like I got this I like to believe Jamie Lee was just giving her just like hugs yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. good luck (laughs) yeah just support because she was filming another movie and they were in the same and they were both filming in North Carolina so she would come every day to the studio and, and give her hugs and I think that's 
she probably needed it. She probably yeah. knew what was going to happen. Like the girl can't act, babe, poor, you know, bless your heart. Let me give you a hug. <laughs> but a bit uh, like Scream, the one thing I do remember reading is they were going to get Melissa Joan Hart. You know, Clarissa explains it all herself. Yeah. <laughs> and Serena, they were going to get her to be Jennifer Love Hewitt's. Yeah, I think, she, I think she did test for it, but she didn't get it. Uh, she, oh, okay. So she wasn't, wasn't on the high up on the list. Yeah. And I don't remember Sarah Michelle Geller if she tested for the role of Julie or not they, they did so yeah yeah Jay Love auditioned for Helen and Sarah Michelle auditioned for Julie and then they got the why they did part. why they didn't do this I don't understand I don't I, it would have made a stronger movie if they yeah. just yes yeah. if they just switched the the, the actresses it would yeah. have been such a good movie Ugh, yeah. I'm just I don't even I don't even want to think about it. It breaks my heart. <laughs> we we got cruel intentions not long after, so we yeah. didn't think about that. Yeah. That Good point. definitely helped. <laughs> oh boy! Well, ladies, it has been a ride. <laughs> <laughs> and now I gotta know: Did this movie hook in? What's your rating? What is your present day rating of? I know what you did last summer. I'll start with you, Eliza. Same day rental. Yes. Okay. That is a fall from grace from your original. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> it was such a shocker watching it again. I was texting Jess when I was watching WhatsApping, Jess being like, I thought this film was so much better. I was absolutely sure I loved this film. <laughs> watching it like, what the hell is going on? Yes, yeah, same day rental, I'm afraid. Oh, same man. day rental. And Jess, what did you think? Same, same day rental. Ooh, yeah. yeah. It was... It, it hit the, the sweet spot in terms of uh, I was looking for some 90s nostalgia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. I agree. I feel the same. It's a same day rental. Yeah. Uh, it just, it uh, aside from Sarah Michelle Gellar's second Croker Queen dress, <laughs> I could leave the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love a cow neck. Don't love yes. the film. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't give what it was supposed to give, you know? It yeah. was awful. Um, My poor brother, he goes, I, I was like, oh, I have to watch a movie tonight. And he's like, oh, yeah, what what movie are you watching? I was like, I know what you did in the last summer. He's like, oh, I just watched that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh, man. But he was a trooper and he rewatched it with me <laughs> good old johnny i did too feel it was a uh one day rental 100 yeah. percent um i felt like you guys i watched it and i was actually excited about rewatching it because i remember vividly thinking this was a fun movie well thank you guys so much again for joining us check out the witchery podcast it's great tell them one more time how to find you so that they can listen you can find us wherever you get to your podcasts or look at <laughs> us um, at our websites witcherypodcast.com instagram the witchery podcast and then twitter <laughs> is podcast witchery <laughs> Awesome. And if you guys have any hot takes out there, our listeners about this uh, movie, about I Know What You Did Last Summer or our hot takes of the movie, you can find us on social media at No More Late Fees at Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. That's a mouthful. Or our Google Voice number. Why don't you give them that number, Jackie? It is 909-601-NMLF. 909-601-6653. You can also leave a message on Anchor and you may be featured on a future episode. We have a Patreon birthday shout out this week. Happy birthday to our Patreon bestie, Miss Terry, also known as Jackie's mom. We hope you have a wonderful birthday. We love you. Remember, if you'd like a birthday shout out, check out our Patreon page at Patreon dot com forward slash no more late fees and as usual have a great week and be kind and rewind